Whether you're drawing at a desk or on a desk, doodles never get old. And in this video, I'll share 50 ideas to help you decorate your journal and more. What's up friends? Welcome. My name is Shada Campbell. Today, if you need a little extra help with these doodles, you can head to Patreon for my worksheet. It's a great way to support this channel and get tons of bonus content. Today, I'm sharing 50 doodle ideas with you. So let's just get started. Now, when it comes to supplies, doodles can be done on any surface with any medium, but here's what I'm using if you're interested. I really like this notebook. It's got thick, toothy paper. It's a Canson mixed media. Um, it's about a five by eight, it's just a nice size, and I really love it for doing pen illustrations because of the paper texture. I am also using a mechanical pencil, um, mechanical pencil and a couple erasers there, nice soft erasers. And of course, I have fine liners. You can use any pen, a Sharpie will do. I'm using the Mulatto black liners in a couple different sizes, but I'll use the 05 for almost all my illustrations today. Okay, let's get started. First up, we're doodling leaves. This is my go-to. It's a curving stem with pairs of oval-shaped leaves just going all the way down. You can make it as large or as small as you like, and obviously there are tons of ways to vary it. I love doodling leaves because you can make them up as you go along. Uh, you can make them any size, and they're wonderful for filling in space. This one, for example, has multiple stems and branches with these tiny black leaves, and you can make it as large or as small as you like. I also love to use larger single leaf doodles. This one starts the same as the first, but then you go around and use those little leaves as your guide to make kind of like an oak leaf. I think leaves, flowers, and berries are some of the most meditative things that you can possibly doodle. Let your mind wander and let your hand just explore the page and see what you come up with. Let's try a berry together. I draw a bunch of little circles. You can do as many as you like. Join them with some stems, put a little dot on the top, and then if you'd like to, you can add a couple leaves. Another great space filler and lots of ways to vary that one depending on size. For example, let's try a really tiny berry together. These look so cute. You can do little clusters and you can even try making the berries different sizes for a truly organic look. And let's do another large single leaf. This one is a pointed oval. I like to divide it through the middle and then place little lines to indicate veining. And it looks cute to make one side darker than the other. These ones are fun to cluster. I'm making it a little smaller this time, but it also looks nice as a large cluster. And again, darkening one side more than the other. If you watch my Bujo videos, you'll recognize this next one. It's my go-to because it's such a great space filler. It's hard to mess up. It's these little scraggly leaves all clustered with tiny berries to help fill space as well. Now the last leaf is a sort of maple leaf. Give yourself that guide by doing those tiny little ovals first and then you just go around and that gives you kind of like a cute maple leaf. Okay, quick and simple as that, we've done 10 leafy doodles. Let's move on to flowers. One of my favorite flowers is this one, and I recommend doing a pencil guide. Draw two semicircles and then go over them in pen, dividing them into three or four of these little areas that kind of make this cup-shaped flower. Put a dark V at the bottom, two curving stems that join, and then these tiny black oval-shaped leaves. It's so simple and so pretty. Another flower begins with a cluster of dots for the stamen, four heart-shaped leaves, and then we do those curving stems and little dark leaves. Another one is a curving semicircle with a scalloped edge along the top, some tiny ovals to indicate the center of the flower, and you can add a stem if you like. For rosebuds, try drawing two uh, unbalanced spirals, one a little larger than the other, and then just tuck a pair of leaves where they meet. You can darken the leaves if you like. Another rose starts with that same spiral, and then you add little petals all the way around the outer edge. It looks so cute and free. And again, try a little curving stem and make the leaves any shape that you like. 
Another one of my floral doodle go-tos is uh, clustered flowers. So I make these really, really simple florals. They have maybe four petals. I often make the front or bottom petal a little more shallow. It gives a look of the flower being concave. You join them all with some curving stems, darken the center of the flower, add some little leaves, and it comes together to look really sweet. Here's an easy lily, draw an X with a line through it, and then use that as your guide to create a five petal flower with each uh, petal ending in a point, little semicircle with a simple stamen, and again, a curving stem with these long pointed leaves. And I like to darken my leaves to show that they're a different color than the flower. When doodling flowers, the best thing you can do is just play, like the leaves, let your hand wander, just try anything that comes into your head. Here's one that I go back to again and again, do a cluster of dots at the center, four petals, kind of make everything a little messy, and then four more petals tucked in between each. It has this nice layered look. This one's a little more detailed, maybe put a little line shading, and then we'll do some pointed leaves kind of peeking out from under those flower petals, and I like to make the leaves a little darker. Remember, doodling is all about the perfectly imperfect. Stuff should look a little weird. It should look like your own unique work. Whatever's in your brain, that's what you want to get out on the paper. In fact, many people won't use a pencil guide when doodling because they want it to just be so free. But I say, if you think a pencil would be helpful, just do it, whatever works for you. Okay, I think we need to branch out from my usual flowers and leaves. Let's try some things from the natural world. A cloud is a fun one that I often use. Put a little cute, happy face on there. Maybe some raindrops, you know, whatever suits the mood or the month that you're doodling in. We could also try a little mushroom. Um, this semicircle with a curving line across the bottom. Draw the little stem underneath and then connect them. Maybe put some details under it. Uh, some spots, some grass, whatever. We could try a rainbow. It's just a, a like a curving line and then do a, as many sections as you like. And of course you could put little clouds, little bumpy, messy, perfectly imperfect clouds across the bottom. Next up, the sun, why not? A circle, we'll put some little teardrop shapes for rays, and I think I'm gonna put some cute sunglasses on him. Why not? That's cute, I'm just trying whatever comes into my head. That's the beauty of doodling. My final nature shape is a cute little tree. I do have a video all about tree doodles. Yes, they're pretty simple, but they're actually really fun and very meditative to draw, so I'll link that in the description. And there we go, five nature doodles. Next up, I'm gonna try animals. Yes, I am. For my cat, I will start with a pencil guide, rounded square with two triangles, and of course that makes the head of our cat. And then I'll put a little nose with a line underneath, a couple whiskers, some simple eyes, and see with doodles, it's so simple, even I can draw animals. Let's try an octopus, kind of do an oval shape with no bottom, and then you can give them as many legs as you can fit. Like five or six is fine, you do not need eight, and uh, decorate them however you like. For the whale, I'm also doing a guide. It's a square, a rounded square, and then the little heart-shaped tail there. I like to keep his face really low and then do some little water coming out of his blowhole. That's the cutest little whale. Let's try an owl, why not? We're doing kind of these googly eye shape to start and then do all these little semicircles on the outside. Two eyes and a beak and then he's kind of got a squarish body with these pointed ears. You can give him wings if you like. I kind of colored in the beak a bit and did little heart shapes for his breast feathers. Last animal, I think I'll attempt a panda. Start with a circle for his head, two circles for his eyes, and we'll just uh, color those in, leaving a little white spot, or you could always use a white gel pen. Two little dark ears. Pandas are easy because it's so black and white. Give them a little nose there, maybe a mouth if you want. You don't always have to capture every feature. Sometimes just a nose or just a mouth looks good. And I am doing kind of like this gingerbread boy body. It's so simple and then I just color it all in. So that's how I keep my little panda bear very easy. 
For my next five doodles, let's try household objects. First one, kettle. Okay, I start with kind of a rectangle, put a little lid on it. You're going to do the spout on one side, handle on the other, and then the fun part is just you can add little decorations if you like. I always do kind of like hearts or dots or lines or whatever, kind of give it a Scandinavian vibe. And uh, if you like, you can be extra and do some shading. What else goes in a house? Maybe a succulent in a cute little pot. I do have a video all about houseplant doodles. That is on my Patreon. I will link that in the description below as well. Let's try a cactus. Again, I wanted to do a pencil guide, so I did. It just helped me to know where the arms of this cactus were going to be before I went over it in pen. I'm doing these cute little plant pots. You can do some little details on cactuses and succulents like lines, X's, or dots to show that they are spiky and prickly. And of course you can color in the plant pot, however. Another household item is a letter, like a real letter that would go in the mail. We could try something like that. I'm basically at this point just doodling anything that comes into my head. For my last household object, how about a light bulb? Pencil helps me get the round shape before I start with pen and then I go around it. I'm adding these thick lines at the bottom to show the base of the light bulb. And then I just put that little spiral detail inside, maybe some lines to show the brightness and and there she is. What next? What next? Um, food. How about food? I uh, will do a strawberry. A little funny leafy top, almost like a rounded heart shape for the berry. Bunch of little seeds and let's just go ahead and color in that top. Next up, let's try a ice cream cone. I'm going to do again a semicircle with a little scalloped edge across the bottom, put a cherry on top, maybe some sprinkles and a ridiculously tiny cone. <laughs> um, a peach. Again, a little heart shape with some dots to show that it's fuzzy, little leaf and a stem, maybe some more dots, I don't know. How about a coffee or a tea, a little mug here, we'll color in that dark liquid, give it a handle. This is a great example of, I didn't do a pencil guide, so it looks a little weird, but maybe that's better, you know what I mean? They should look weird. People wanna see weird, they wanna see your style, that's what makes this fun. And my final food item is bubble tea. <laughs> I'm drawing the cup, the straw, and I don't know, I'm gonna do the tapioca ball thingies. That is really tiny, so it looks a bit messy, but whatever. Okay, five more things. I'm gonna go back to my nature shapes. I really like that, like clouds and moons and rainbows and suns, oh my. <laughs> Before I did the cloud and the sun, what if I pair them together? It's a totally different doodle. For stars, I like to draw them the way you do as a kid with the intersecting triangles and then just go over them in pen. I could do a little half sun and again put a little happy face on him or what about a moon we haven't done a moon yet with dark stars to show the starry night this is one of my bujo go-to doodles as well and how about one more cloud but this time make him grumpy <laughs> little angry eyes Okay, we only need five more, five, that's crazy. Next up, more food. I'm gonna draw a donut first. I like to do donut doodles, junk food and fruit. Those are my go-tos. How about a croissant? Start with a curving line if you need a guide and just divide it into five sections. Put a little line shading if you like. How about some cherries? Draw the classic cherry, two circles, joined by that stem and maybe a leaf. I put the leaf in the wrong spot, didn't I? I don't know. <laughs> okay, how about some grapes? We'll do just a cluster of little circles, simple as that, and then add some stems and leaves. There's five more foods. Uh, no, that's only four. Here's the fifth one, an apple, but it's uh, cut in half, so it's a little bit different. A little unexpected, <laughs> threw something new at you there. Okay, that's it, my 50 doodles are done. To finish my sketchbook page, I'm filling in space with just anything that comes into my head. Probably it's gonna be flowers and leaves. Those are my go-tos after all. And true doodling is just so relaxing. I think if you do a page like this, my biggest piece of advice to you is just take off the pressure. They do not need to look like mine. They should not look like mine. They should look like yours and they should be weird, okay? Thank you for watching, friends. Head over to Patreon to get the Doodle Worksheet. It's a great way to support the channel. All the content starts at two bucks a month and you get tons of bonus content and this week it's a worksheet. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.